So, hey everyone, how are you doing? Um, I'm Brian Chesky, I'm CEO and um, head of the Airbnb community. Um, we have some amazing hosts with me today. Um, so we have Rhonda, Kyle, Kevin, and Esther. Um, they're gonna be talking and we have some awesome hosts. Let's hear for the host here in San Francisco, the 30 hosts. And, and um, how many hosts are super hosts? Any, uh, we have most of the audience is super hosts, and nearly half of the hosts watching are super hosts. We had uh, nearly 85,000 views on the last video. So um, there's a fair amount of people watching this. Now, um, I, wanna, I, I wanna welcome all the hosts and watch parties. So we have, there are parties in Tokyo, Sydney, Taipei and Delhi, where hosts are coming together and watching this today. And we had literally thousands of questions. This is our third host Q&A. And why are we doing this? Like, why are we actually doing a host Q&A? We are doing it so we can listen to your feedback, we can answer your host questions, and share updates to the community. Now, for this Q&A, we had 6,000 questions. You asked 6,000 questions and 35,000 votes. And these came from 167 countries. And just so you know, I bet you're probably asking, did you read any of these questions? Or you just read like the top three. We had a team who read all 6,000 questions in every single language. And so we actually read every single question. That was a rule we have. If a host asks a question, we answer, we read it. And so we're not gonna answer, well, it depends on how much time you have. We can uh, take a while to answer 6,000 questions. So it'll take a couple months. But we um, did read them. And all of these questions go to our product team. And we look at them as we're developing our product. So um, we're also um, going to introduce um, a new executive at Airbnb, um, Greg Greeley. And so I wanted to start. And, um, and uh, we'll just, we can just start with some of our hosts here. So we have a number of hosts here. Um, Kyle, you're a host. Where are you from? Uh, China, Beijing. You're from China, Beijing. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been a host for? Uh, almost a month. <laughs> almost a month. <laughs> almost a month. You're a veteran. OK. Yeah. And why did you start hosting? Yeah, so basically, you know, I'm a travel documentary filmmaker. So, I, you know, I've been to 70 odd countries and uh, doing my travels. I, I had some really memorable experience of Airbnb, Airbnb hosts. So uh, when I'm not traveling, you know, I'm living in Beijing. I live in this uh, wonderfully renovated courtyard in this like really old and atmospheric part of Beijing. And uh, I decided to become a host because, you know, I want the, 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 my guests to, s to experience that beyond the typical, you know, the tourist sites, uh, the Great Wall, the Forbidden City. I want them to have a feel like, ha have them feel like a local. How do, how do the local live? How do they see the, the you know, the, the Beijing? So basically, that was my idea, you know, to have them see that part of Beijing that I really like. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, Rhonda, you're a, you're a home host and an experienced host. And where are you from? From Shanghai. So from Shanghai. Yeah, from Shanghai. And uh, how long have you been a host for? Uh, almost two years. And you're a super host. Yeah, I'm a super host. Awesome. And you're an, what experience do you do? Mm, my experience in Shanghai is cocktail mixing. Unlike in the States, cocktails are just becoming popular in China. People only go to bars for drinks. But I think everyone should enjoy the cocktail at home. That's why I'm trying to bring this new lifestyle to Chinese young people. And mm, I'm also a super host. I find it um, being the super host and the experience host will benefit each other. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. it, it um, helps to give my home listings and experience um, more awareness, of course, more bookings. Right. Yeah, I feel so lucky that. And, and, yeah. and how'd you learn to mix cocktails? Have you been doing this a long time? Uh, yeah, for last year. L yeah? Yeah, for last year, I do the cocktail mixing. Yeah, I, I almost uh, go, uh, have experienced um, guests for around 200 people. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, well, thank you. And Esther and Kevin, you're here again, and you've been super host 12 different times. So you're, you're absolutely veterans. First of all, congratulations. We have, so, we have these are amazing super hosts. Um, so, I mean, what's your secret? How do you, how do you keep doing it? Well, if it's a secret, then it won't be a secret. OK, anymore. then. But we'll share. Yes, we'll exactly. Share. So yeah, democratize this for a because second. Because I, I really do believe it's uh, for everybody that hosts out there, whatever you can do to make your guests feel comfortable. Uh, remember the golden rule. Always treat them as you would like to be treated. Um, and because I've traveled myself on Airbnb, and I always, I've experienced going to a place, and you know the host doesn't greet me, they don't care, they don't check in with me. How's my stay? And, and it makes a big difference. But Esther could talk a lot more about it than I. 
Oh, yeah, let's hear about Esther. So my secret is, you know, always make an effort to meet them in person. I think that's very important. If you can do it, um, make a follow-up message once they stay, you know, after the first night. You know, make sure that they are comfortable, offer your help if they need anything, and, you know, make sure that they know you are there, that you care. And this is basically what I do. I always uh, also give a personal touch. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I used to put bottles of wine, <laughs> but and then I noticed that some of the guests didn't drink all the bottle, so I started finishing up. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> so, and then it got too tipsy, so okay, okay. <laughs> so I started putting cookies, and I always make sure they have coffee. So you move from wine to cookies, or they get wine and cookies now? <laughs> no, our, cook, our kids devour the cookies now. So. Oh, okay. Well, we have they, cookies. <laughs> and and how, many, how many people have you hosted? Well, I would say we have been doing it almost for six years. And how many people do you think have stayed with you? More than 100? I think, I think oh. we're about 400. Getting 400. Oh. And where have these people come from? 400. Everywhere but Antarctica. And uh, <laughs> so far, so somebody's watching from Antarctica. And have you kept in touch with anyone? Yeah, definitely. We, in fact, there's a few people that stayed a couple weeks with us that we really, even the kids got attached to. So mm -hmm. we keep in touch with them. And then uh, we have a lot of repeat visitors. Any, like, of the, of the 400 so people stay with you. Any incredibly memorable experiences? Like so anything, any work, anything worth The sharing? first thing that comes to mind are a couple from Ukraine that came up for dinner with us and they brought out the guitars and the beer. And so they travel with a guitar? Well, no, we have the grab, guitar. Oh, one of your guitars. Right, okay. Right. So you have a guitar. Do, do you play guitar? So yes. I, well, I try. Oh, all right. All right. Maybe for the next show. <laughs> awesome. So, so, well, thank you all very much. So what we're going to do now is next up, we're going to be introducing our president of homes, Greg Greeley, who uh, joined very recently. And I'm very, very excited. And before we do that, we're going to cut to a short video about a trip he took. Before I started an Airbnb, I rented a beautiful tree house, and it is marked by a Route 66 sign. I told myself, well, if I take this job, I think I should go along Route 66 and meet some of those hosts. That he really wants to come and um, interact with all of the hosts, and he really values their opinion. You know, it's really neat to see that. For me to get a phone call to say, hey, we would like to sit down with you to see how it's going in Oklahoma City was awesome. They want to hear about you and what your experiences were and opinions. Someone has your back, basically. I didn't think we had a community like this, but when you actually meet them, they actually care about you. I'm excited about the idea of there being more of a community sense between hosts, not feeling quite so much in, in my own little corner will be great. We haven't ever had a chance to meet anybody else that is an Airbnb host before, so it's very helpful. Hosts have made this trip truly unique. The core Airbnb is a super powerful personal community. It's something that I will be taking back to my new role. And we're back. I feel like I'm on a talk show. Uh, that was a really uh, incredible trip you just took. So here we are with Greg Greeley, our uh, president of homes. So if you share your home on Airbnb, Greg is your guy. He's going to uh, really care for that part of our community, which is most of our community. Um, so first of all, before I ask you any questions, I'd love to give Greg a wel warm welcome. All right. Thank you. So, Greg, welcome. Welcome, obviously, to Airbnb. You've been here for a little while, and welcome to our, your very first host Q&A. Um, so maybe you can tell all of our hosts just maybe a little bit more about yourself. Oh, I'd be happy to. Um, I've, um, I have, you know, I grew up in the United States, um, both in the Pacific Northwest. I lived in Los Angeles, San Francisco. Um, and when I graduated from college, I took a trip across Europe. And it was the first time I was actually exposed to, to home sharing. It was before Airbnb. But I was really, really touched by the fact that um, people across Europe would meet me at train stations and invite me into their homes so that I could really connect with um, you know, the, the people there. And it was, it was, right. for me, it was just really transformational. Um, and then um, after that, my wife and I moved to Los Angeles. 
and started actually staying in bed and breakfast. In about 1990, um, we made this, um, this promise to ourselves that when we retired, we would run a, a bed and breakfast. <laughs> and so you guys should know that when I shared that story with Brian, um, he immediately came back and said, well, I got a better idea. <laughs> you join Airbnb and help us help millions of people run a bed and breakfast. So it's it's just super pleasure to be here. Well, awesome. And so you just you just is a really cool trip. I did. Um, we just saw this video, and I think we have it here. Um, oh my, was this the whole? Oh my God, was you actually did this whole? Yeah, trip? I did. Like, we actually I, haven't I, talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you did the trip, but I don't think I appreciated just how far you traveled. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us about this journey you did. I will. Um, so for those of you that um, live outside of the United States. Um, the Route 66 has this deep historical uh, meaning for people that, uh, that in the United States. During that kind of industrial area when cars and, and transportation were becoming prominent in the, in the 30s, it was the way that um, you basically would travel from the Midwest or even from the East out to see California for the first time. And there's been you know, a number of songs written about it, and it's very fun. And you know, little, little trivia there. Um, a very great uncle of mine ran for the president of the United States and is known for his famous quote, go west, young man. And so this was me going east. On going the east. Yeah. Going, going the opposite direction. Um, but the, you know, the first time, you know, Brian and I first met back in um, 2011, 2012. And um, when he invited me in for, a, for an interview, um, I stayed in the treehouse, as you saw. And yeah. there was this kind of unusual, iconic kind of place in the parking lot. There was a Route 66 sign when you parked the car there. And as I parked it that evening, it was after you and I had actually been talking about yeah. possibly joining. Yeah, yeah. And I looked at that sign and, and I was just struck by, here we are in the Bay Area and there's this Route 66 sign, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. And I was touched by the fact that, you know, that right at this moment there are thousands of hosts that are welcoming people into their home. And and not only you know, along that Route 66, and not only that, there's, there's thousands, even millions of roads all over the world where people are welcoming themselves in their home, into their homes. And I got these little goosebumps, and the team tells me those are called air bumps. <laughs> <laughs> and I suddenly, you know, so I, I came with this kind of thinking of like, well, that is so amazing. If I do, in fact, take this job, I am going to go travel along Route 66 and meet a number of those hosts and get their feedback even before I start. And so that's why. And what are some of the things you heard? Well, the. Um, you know, what you, what you love about the host community is they're very vocal. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so, um, you know, it, it was super exciting to be able to connect with so many different people. It was really, you know, we had over seven different um, host groups. And people were sharing with me, with me how much they like connecting. You know, when I'd share the story about um, early days in Europe or since I've been on the Airbnb platform since 2011, 2012, how much I've appreciated right. connecting with right. people. And they, you know, and that's what, you know, that's what I was hearing. It's like people really yeah. like their, their community. Um, I met Fred here in Flagstaff who um, gave me lots of feedback about how we could continue to enhance the products and, right. you know, both some, some, some small tweaks and some big ideas. But, so, but Fred was one that really wanted to make sure he could connect with us. And speaking of, like, Fred and some of the advice you got from hosts, maybe you can give us a sense of some of the things you're working on that might be exciting for hosts. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, it's very clear that we can continue to um, provide economic empowerment for our hosts. Right. Um, and that's what the, you know, our platform and the investments that we're doing are to do just that, make it easier for people that are considering being hosts to be able to um, welcome people in their homes, make it easier, provide some more tool set for people um, that are currently hosts. I heard some very clear feedback that um, a lot of people along that Route 66 have very much appreciated meeting people from other countries. And so we're going to continue to invest in ways that we can, we can grow you know, the, the, the cross-border travelers. The, um, you know, we're over in 190 countries right now have hosts and guests and to see that cross-border travel and to be able to connect with those people is just super fun. And Route 66 is just one small sliver of the many ways that people can and where people connect. And it's pretty cool with Route 66 that there's not hotels along the entire highway, but there are homes and hosts in nearly every community in the world, including your kind of favorite cross-country routes. And yeah. I think staying in Airbnbs in a kind of cross-country trip is a really, really cool idea. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Greg, for being here. And so um, let's hear it for Greg, everyone. Okay. Thanks. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a really quick break, and then we're going to go to the Q&A portion of the event. So stay tuned.
right, well, welcome back. And so you'll see we have a okay, new audience. So Greg is still here, but I want to introduce some of the people we have for the Q&A, starting with Clara. Clara is our product lead for the Homes team. Uh, we have Luca here, and Luca leads product for all of our pricing tools. We get a number of questions on pricing, so Luca's going to answer them. And I'm really excited because we have a super host in Los Angeles, Debbie Pollack. You're up here. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Let's hear it for Debbie, uh, one of our hosts. Thank you. And I know you're supposed to answer some questions. Before we answer some questions, um, you're a host. You've been a host for how long? Just over four years. Four years. And you are also a, an actress. I am. Uh, have you been in a movie I've seen? Uh, uh, possibly. <laughs> Very Anyone, possibly. Anyone, any of us have seen what movies? Um, I actually did a film in the 80s called 16 Candles. Yeah. 16 and um, it's very interesting because I actually have guests that come because they Google me and they actually uh -huh. want to come to stay at an American actress's house. So if you want to stay at an American actress's house that was in the 1984 hit film, 16 Candles, here you go, Debbie Pollock oh. in Los Angeles. Look for her on Airbnb. Uh, so anyway, so welcome. And I Thank think we you. can hand it over to you. I think you're going to ask, uh, ask some questions. You. Um, actually, I just... I know that um, I've been a super host on Airbnb for the four years that I have been hosting. And many times people like to ask me, you know, what's your, your most memorable experience? I have to say the first memorable experience is I actually got a dog because I have Airbnb. There was a television show that was a training, dog training show. Yeah. And they chose me because they were going to train the dog to welcome everyone into <laughs> the backyard where my guests go. <laughs> but also I've had my biggest love of doing this is I get to participate in people's lifetime moments. I've had four engagements. I've had anniversaries and birthday parties and bridal parties. And it's people welcome me into their families wow. when they have these events in my backyard. That's incredible. So it's really great. That's really and like many, men, uh, many women, I know you mentioned economic empowerment. It's incredibly important for me to do it, to be able to host in Los Angeles because it really does help me keep the family home I've had for 30 years. Oh, that's an incredible story. Yeah. Well, thank you for hosting, too, oh. and ho hosting all these guests and all these incredible experiences. I get lots of invitations all over the world to go I visit the people imagine. that come to my house. Well, uh, you should take them up on that offer. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yes. <laughs> I, I got miles. There you go. <laughs> So we can actually start with uh, some questions, if you like. Um, I've really enjoyed watching these Q&As in the past, so it's very exciting to be here. And, and thank you again for inviting me to represent everybody to ask the questions that we're really all wondering about. The first question is something that I think is really important. It's about setting expectations for guests before they arrive. So question number one is, why did you add new basic amenities requirements? So this is a timey one. I think we can have Clara answer this one. Yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Clara. My team and I, we actually look after all of our hosts on the platform. Um, earlier this year, we actually announced that hosts would be required to provide a set of amenities that we called the essential amenities. Uh, those were toilet paper, soap for hands and body, a towel per guest, a pillow per guest, and then linens for any of the beds that guests would be staying in. And so I actually want to make an update and a clarification. Although we definitely recommend having these amenities, we're actually no longer requiring them for every single host and listing on the platform. I want to give you a little background as to you know, why we made this recommendation and also why we're making this change. So we initially picked these five amenities based on what guests told us they found to be essential to actually have a comfortable stay and what they were expecting when they arrived. Um, but as you know, meeting guest expectations and then exceeding them is actually really important to a five-star review. And we, often, we were digging into why some hosts were receiving lower review scores. And the absence of any one of these amenities actually resulted in a lower average score for the host rather than um, if you had them all and you were much more likely to get five stars. Um, I mean, you can imagine if you flew all the way to a different country, showed up late at night at your listing, and then were surprised not to have a pillow when you were ready to sleep, it'd probably be pretty disappointing, right? And that, that's actually how the essential amenities grouping came to be. But that said, we heard from many of you, and actually, you know, it's very obvious in many places all around, all around the world where these amenities aren't expected. The standard and the custom in those markets in, and local travelers for many years actually, no, I don't need to bring, um, I, I need to bring my own bedding. I should not expect it. Um, there's this gorgeous village, village in France, Chamonix. Generations of people know you, if you visit there, you bring your own sheets. But as we're, you know, we're seeing more and more um, around the world with 
this international network effect that we actually have with all of our guests, not every guest in the world knows to expect this local custom. And so for the hosts in these markets and for, for many people all around the world, um, whether it's because it's normal in your market, maybe it's too hard for you to get to turn your listing over, maybe your guests already know to expect it, um, we're gonna make that change. And so in order to help um, our host, but also help set expectations for guests. Um, we're going to uh, suggest that these are amenities you should provide. Um, you will be able to update this on your listing page, whether you do or not. And we'll continue working on ways to make it really clear for your guests so that no one shows up late at night surprised. And we also encourage you to also uh, update your guests directly as well. So the whole point was to support your success. We are making a change. These were required amenities. Uh, they will no longer be required going forward, although we definitely still recommend them. Thanks. Those expectations are so important. It really is. I'm going to go to question number two. Um, I'm somebody who's always had a strict cancellation policy, but recently there's been a change in the cancellation policy. So question number two, our hosts are asking, why did you change the cancellation policy, making it easier for guests to cancel at no cost? So maybe, Luca, you can take this one? Yeah, absolutely. So this question touches on two important topics. The first one is the grace period, the 48-hour grace period that we introduced for strict cancellations. Uh, and the, the second part is the extenuating circumstances that we uh, introduce for guests as well who need to cancel for unforeseen situations. So regarding the grace period, um, first, our primary goal in introducing this, this grace period was to allow hosts a simple way, a hassle-free way to resolve booking mistakes and a way to book with confidence. And since introducing it, we've actually seen an increased number of bookings. So it's, it's a win for everyone. And while some of the hosts like you with a strict cancellation policy see a few more cancellations, they also see more completed bookings. So all in all, it's a win for everyone. Now, some of you have voiced concerns over potential misuse by some of the guests. And to protect you from last minute cancellations, uh, this grace period only applies for 48 hours after booking and only if the cancellation is more than 14 days before check-in. So for example, guest booking months out have about two days to, uh, to cancel penalty free. And after that, they, they incur the standard, uh, standard policy fees. We also make sure that guests can't double book and then cancel one penalty free, That's which good. I can imagine is a big worry. So um, if, if a guest has more than one listing booked, they, they need to cancel with a penalty to, book, uh, to cancel the second one. In addition to protect against misuse, a guest can only cancel penalty th free three times per year. That's great. On extenuating circumstances, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll jump onto the second part of the question. Sure. Um, we allow guests to cancel penalty free if they have unforeseen circumstances that qualify for our policy. Uh, and we also want to make sure that we keep host needs and your needs top of mind as well. So uh, we want to ensure you that, it, uh, we want to reassure you that for hosts, the same exact thing applies. So if you have to cancel uh, due to last minute maintenance issues or emergencies or anything like that, you're also covered in the extenuating circumstances policy. Um, we haven't seen any big misuse so far, but we're monitoring it all the time to make sure that we, we keep, keep uh, it being used fairly. Uh, in order to make sure requirements are clear, we're also updating our policy pages so that both guests and hosts know what to expect and what qualifies. That's great. That's good. It's good to have that, tw that 48 hours after a booking, just in case something comes up. So yeah. Great. All right, question number three. All right. This was the second most voted question. It had over 3,400 votes. <laughs> so as you can see, a lot of people are thinking about it. Um, so many hosts ask, can you request that guests have a profile picture? And can you share more info up about guests up front before they book? So maybe I can just start by saying, you know, this is not only one of the top voted questions for this Q&A, it's been one of the most frequent questions asked for the past few Q&As, and I know this is a big, big topic. I also know this sparked a pretty lively debate at the community center, um, and I just want to apologize to the community for not answering this sooner, but we are going to answer it now. It's a complex issue, so maybe, Greg, you can uh, share a little bit more about it. Yeah, I'd like to. Actually, this came up um, fairly quickly on my Route 66 tour, and as I meet each of the, the, the cities, um, you know, people were very curious about it. And of course, since I hadn't actually started, I couldn't really provide feedback. So, um, what I did do is came back and met with the team, and, and it is in fact a complicated um, issue. Probably more comp you know, complicated than you might realize. So, um, firstly, we recognize that you know, opening up your home and inviting um, guests into your house requires a significant amount of trust, both trust in Airbnb and trust in your guest, and, and, and we re re absolutely respect that. Um, unfortunately, we've also heard um, 
some, some kind of painful stories of people that had their photos and, and felt that they were discriminated against because of either their appearance or their race. And so we want to be mindful of that. And as, as I trust you all know, we do not tolerate discrimination on our platform. It's too important to our, um, to our mission to be able to connect people of, of, regardless of, of any um, of their, their, those background factors. So um, we got some additional feedback and we talked about it. And um, I do want to make sure people know that the vast majority of guests have uploaded their photo. And, um, and that certainly helps with the, with the booking flow. But what we are going to do is, um, you know, Claire and the team are going to make some changes that do allow you as a host to require that before arrival, a um, guest will upload their photo. And so for that small percentage of guests that do not have photos, they won't be able to book um, your, your property until they actually get that uploaded. And so, and then, you know, after booking, if you actually do ha um, have somebody that you, you have accepted before they, um, you know, before that photo is uploaded, that will, you can choose to have that photo uploaded um, at that booking confirmation. So um, we think this is the, the best balance of fairness across um, what is indeed a somewhat complicated issue. But um, I'm actually very excited about it because I think it really helps meet the, the needs that I've heard from all of you um, as hosts, as well as address you know, very, very clear concern from some of our guests. That's Thanks. fantastic, because I've always been curious, like, what is that soccer ball going to show up like when it gets to my house? <laughs> Good. And this is one where we'll continue to take feedback and, and evolve um, the, 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 you know, kind of those requirements or the policies as, as we go along. So we're going to continue to monitor how people are using these settings as well. What I've also found is people are very open. Once, okay. once after they book, if you say, you know, I always like to welcome people and know what they look like, people are very open and very very receptive to putting up a picture when you when a host asks. Exactly. Yeah. In the early days of Airbnb, we had a lot of dogs and flowers. We said. <laughs> now was, you have soccer ball. Now it's soccer. A soccer ball is <laughs> replacing dogs and flowers. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next question. Question number four. So you talked about you've heard these these questions before, Brian. Yeah. This yeah. one you've heard at every Q and A. That's right. Mm. This question, over two thousand hosts want to hear this answer, and the question is. Hosts are constantly being encouraged to lower their price. Why? And who is my listing being compared to that this uh, lowering is being uh, offered? Yeah, so again, this is one of the most, that is the most frequently asked question. It's come up in every single one of the Q&As. And so maybe, Luca, you know, I've answered this before, but I think we can answer it in much more detail. And of course, Luca, you can go into yeah. a bit more detail. Absolutely, we can give more details and also we can give an update this time, which is great. Right. Um, so, first of all, let, remind me, let me remind you, your price is always up to you. Um, and then starting to answer the question, our tools are designed to maximize your income. And historically, they've been most effective at doing that by helping you get booked when demand is low. What that means is that a lot of the time, hosts will see suggestions to decrease their price. Now, we heard you that sometimes hosts question whether the price we suggest makes it even worth hosting. Right. And we hear you loud and clear. So especially when demand is low, there might be situations where what a guest is willing to pay is lower than what you're willing to host at. In those situations, that's where it's particularly important to tell smart pricing your minimum price. That way, by setting a floor, you will only get reservations at a price that's worth it for you. Now, some of you may have seen suggestions, even with this minimum price active, that suggest setting a price below that minimum price. Those suggestions are intended to keep you informed about what price would get you booked if you were interested in getting booked. And a lot of hosts actually use this information to their advantage very successfully. We understand that this is not welcome information for everyone, so we're, we're working on ways to make you uh, able to turn this information off. So this is for low demand periods. Uh, however, a lot of you also care about high demand periods. And uh, you know, many of you get a lot of bookings. And the question is, how can I have a tool that helps me uh, make sure I don't leave money on the table when demand is high? Very important. Absolutely. And this is why we spent the first half of this year working on this, this part of the, the problem. And I can say that we've improved our model to better be uh, in tune with, the, uh, with demand during high demand periods. So specifically, our improved model looks at data from last year and looks at the relationship with, between demand and the book prices in your market. And so as a result, our improved uh, smart pricing suggestions should be much more in tune with high demand markets uh, as of right now, up to three months into the future. So this is just a first step. We're always improving our algorithms. We're getting better and better at incorporating your goals. And we want to be uh, even more proactive about giving you data about market demand rather than price suggestions so you can make informed pricing decisions. 
in addition, second part of the question. <laughs> That's a very long answer, very long answer, but um, what are we comparing you to? So our comparisons look at, you, uh, look at your listing through the eyes of guests and then compare you to listings that are successful at getting booked. So first of all, um, we take listings that, are, that, that host a similar number of, of guests okay. and there are somewhat nearby. But then we look at what guests click before and after visiting your listing. Really? Yes, and you'd be surprised, and we're surprised too, to see what guests sometimes click before and after visiting your listing. That's fantastic. And that's just the beginning, because then the next question is, how do we make sure that we're comparing you to successful listings? Unfortunately, a lot of listings out there don't get a lot of bookings, especially in periods of low demand. And therefore, comparing you to those listings wouldn't necessarily help you set a price that gets you booked. Mm -hmm. And that's why we filter on listings that are already successful. As a result, so we know that uh, the, way, the way you do it is probably to go into the search mode as a guest and to pick listings to compare yourself against. What's really hard about that is you don't know which listings are more or less successful. Moreover, if you actually search with dates, you only look at listings that aren't available, booked. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and those listings, surprise, surprise, tend to be priced a little bit higher. So we want to help you um, make those comparisons more simple and compare you to the right listings. Now, all said, we'll sometimes miss factors that are important to you in your comparison. And that's why we keep on updating our models every day and want to be um, more and more receptive to feedback. So keep the feedback coming and hopefully our suggestions and comparisons will, will get better and better. That's great information. I know as a host, I look at the prices and I think, I'm not quite sure I could charge that little or even sometimes that much. Right, right. So this is great. It's nice to hear about the algorithm, algorithms. I'm sure a lot of hosts want to know exactly how do they do that. Yeah. Great. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, question number five is something that's very near and dear to my heart. And I have to do a huge shout out to all of the community organizers in Los Angeles and say thank you. You are wonderful and you put in so much effort and work and everything over the past couple of years in LA. So I, I want to say thank you to them. So the question is, what is the short-term rental legislation in my region? Mm. Where can I find out this information about it? And then how can I ensure that I'm compliant? This is a great question, Debbie. Um, this is a very, very obviously important question. We've done a lot of really good work here. And so we have here Crystal, who leads okay. our policy development. Maybe, Crystal, <laughs> you can answer a, a little bit more information about this. Sure. So we want to create communities where everyone can belong. And a big part of that involves working with lawmakers to make sure that we're creating policies that benefit everyone. Um, it's important to keep in mind, as many of you already know, that rules on short-term rentals vary city by city. So we want to make sure that you understand, as you mentioned, your response responsibility um, to check the rules in your city um, before you welcome your first guest. Now, in many places, we also know that laws around home sharing are outdated or unclear. So one of the major things that our policy team, and I'm a member of the policy team, does here is really partner with local governments um, to develop common sense approaches to home sharing in cities across the globe. Um, and that's one thing that we also want to encourage our hosts, all of you, to do as well. Um, we have hundreds of host clubs located across the globe, and those hosts um, reach out to their local government officials and talk to them about how important hosting is, um, how it's important to their families, and how it's important important um, that home sharing is provided for in local laws and regulations. Um, so we appreciate all of the work that you all do um, to, to partner with local governments and to complement the work we do. Now to the resources. So um, we have something called responsible hosting pages on our help center on Airbnb site. And we encourage you to check out those pages. Um, they can provide information about laws in various cities, a growing list of cities across the globe. They also provide some tips um, and requirements Requirements for hosting that may also be helpful for many of you um, as a refresher. Um, those pages are also representative of the work that we've done um, with local governments across the globe and the work that a lot of hosts have done um, in developing these common sense approaches, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and we welcome your feedback and encourage you all to continue to stay involved. Can I ask you to say again, where can we find those pages? Sure. So it's the responsible hosting pages. They're at Airbnb.com forward slash responsible dash hosting. You can also just go to our help center. Terrific. <laughs> I hope somebody is writing that down for me because I need to like go home and make sure I look at that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, this next one, 
Oh, oh actually, we're going to take a break. Yeah, I think we're going to take a quick break. So we're going to take a break. When we get back, we're going to have more questions, I know, on extra fees, our review system, and experiences. So we'll do a quick break right now. So we're back, and I want to, again, for those just tuning in, just want to reintroduce our team. We have super host uh, Debbie, Luca from our team, Clara, and we also have Jobot, who um, is going to be talking about Airbnb experiences. So Debbie, maybe take it away for some more questions. More questions. This is question number six. A lot of people were asking okay. about this one. Um, sometimes we want to make our, our listings a little more special, maybe want to offer breakfast or an extra bed. So question number six talks about, can you add an option to add extra fees for things like extra services, pet fees, tourism tax, or maybe even that fabulous, delicious breakfast? Yeah, so maybe, Luca, you can share a few more details here. Yeah, absolutely. So we hear you. You want to you wanna be able to list out the components of your price. You want to be able to charge additional fees or offer optional services. Let me give a little bit of background behind each of these before diving in. So we distinguish between three categories. We think about standard fees, which are fees you charge to every guest. We have additional fees, which are fees you charge to specific guests. And then we think about optional services, which are extra services offered for a fee. So when it comes to standard fees, these are things like local taxes where applicable, or resort fees, community fees, linen fees. Today, the problem is that you have to either include them in your original nightly price, or you need to charge them in person or in the resolution center after check-in. Right. Understandably, this can lead to frustration, it can lead to confusion for your guests, and we've heard it's very difficult for accounting purposes as well. So we're actively exploring this feature, and we're, um, we're also working with local governments who continue to automate the way in which we collect the remit taxes. Um, the second one we said was additional fees. So these are costs that you incur for some of your guests, for example, pet fees, for example, parking. What we hear is hard about it today is that it's hard to determine who should incur these costs. So your choices are you either charge everyone, making your price higher, or you charge some people in person or through the resolution center. Um, the third one we talked about is optional services, breakfast or other things you want to offer. So we hear that this could be great for up-leveling your, uh, up your hosting and also to provide additional revenue streams for you. Now, we're committed to exploring ways to make this available for you so you can charge additional fees and offer optional services. And we want to do so in a way that, on the one hand, helps you run your business and provide great hospitality, but also doesn't harm you or cost you bookings and reviews. So one thing we learned is that um, it might be overwhelming for guests to see so many add-ons and so many options. And sometimes it'll prompt guests to ask if they're actually getting their money's worth. At the same time, when you're offering extras, it might create expectations. So the breakfast or the airport pickup and the bike that you might pay for might actually create really high expectations with guests. So we're trying to find ways to make this work so that it doesn't cost you bookings and it up-levels your hosting. And we're, we're working on it and we're exploring it. That's great. I actually had two guests actually make me breakfast as a thank you. That, oh, really? Uh, good. Yes, I got wow. their bill. No, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> they they charge you. No, <laughs> oh, and my little screen has gone completely blank without the Adobe. I think. Let me try that again. I apologize. Luca, you know how to do this. Nope. Well, let's just look at the next question. Yeah. Oh, the review system. Review system. Let's uh -oh. talk about the review system. Many hosts have said in the past that they found that maybe the review system isn't incredibly fair to hosts. So the question is that I'm going to create, because yeah. it's not on there, is what is Airbnb doing about helping to make the review system more fair to hosts? So first of all, I want to say I know this is top of mind for many hosts. If you are a host, you get a lot of reviews, this is going to be top of mind for you. Um, and beyond this Q&A, because we're going to answer this, I also want to know that you can read your feedback if you go to airbnb.com slash feedback in the community center. 
Now the review center is very, very complex and it's core to Airbnb. So we want to spend some time on this. And so maybe Claire, you can talk a little bit more about this. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you're right. The review system is complex, um, but it's also one that we, we know how much you care about it. And we actually know how much it matters to you and the success um, that you experience hosting. So we are absolutely committed to making sure that it is a fair one. And the review system has to be fair for both our hosts and our guests. So maybe I can break down a couple of the most common pieces of feedback we hear about the review system and talk about each one of them. So the first, can you please make sure the guests read my description? Um, <laughs> we know how much work you guys put into writing your listing descriptions and being as clear as possible and giving your guests as much information as possible. And we also hear that sometimes guests will write reviews for you for things you put in your listing description, which is clearly frustrating, and, um, and even things that other guests have written reviews about. Here's what we're doing to help. So first off, we are enabling you to set house rules. These are rules that every guest has to ex read and accept before they can actually book your listing. And that's one way that we're making it more obvious to guests. These are, these are the important things to know. In addition to house rules, there are things to note about your listing. Maybe there are stairs leading up to the front door and not an elevator. Maybe you don't offer parking, but it's a busy downtown area. These are important pieces of information to note. And these are also things guests now must see and accept before they can book your listing. These are opportunities for you to make it clearer to your guests. We also take this information that's in the house rules and save it to message templates. So as you're messaging with your guests and coordinating with them about the trip, it's very easy to just copy that information and remind guests, um, hey, these are the house rules. Please um, have your expectations set. So um, you know, I would make sure and encourage you to um, use that tool. And we've talked about this before, but it comes up as well. Sometimes guests are brand new to traveling on Airbnb. You've asked us to help explain why traveling on Airbnb is a little different. It's very different than staying in a hotel and what to expect. And so now brand new guests also get a specific email from us explaining why Airbnb is different. So those are some of the things we're doing to help make sure the information that guests are seeing or that you're providing, we're maximizing the chance that a guest could see it. But it brings us to a second question, which is, you know, sometimes these reviews just still don't feel fair. Maybe they're, they're not right. And um, can Airbnb help to remove or correct these reviews? You know, reviews are intended to be an honest reflection of how a guest actually experienced their stay with you and your home. And because Airbnb is a trust-based platform, we want to make sure that those reviews are fair and balanced. And this is true, frankly, of the guest reviews of our hosts and our host reviews of our guests. It's both sides. Um, and so we want to make sure, what, um, you know, when we hear from you that these reviews seem inaccurate or, or like unfair, it feels really frustrating. But we also want to make sure that what a guest really experienced and the re uh, experience they uh, want to share with the world is something that you know, is um, fair and representative. So uh, a couple of things here. First, um, we want to. You should know that uh, if a review is left for you, you can always respond to the review. So if you're worried about a future guest seeing a review and it's not in context, right there next to that review, you can actually have your response. So all future guests know what the situation might have been and how you responded to it. And first and foremost, that tool is always available to you. Second, we actually are going to dig into the data some more. Um, we've heard about these one-off reviews. We've heard about the the fact that like. I have lots of great reviews, and then this one outlier here, it's just messing up my entire rating. Um, we want to look into that. And if the data actually shows that it's affecting our hosts from being able to make super host, or maybe from being able to qualify for programs like Plus, we are committed to doing something to address that. So we have some work to do to do homework there and actually understand a little bit more exactly how fair or unfair these um, reviews are to you. And then you know, third. There's a whole category of sometimes reviews just don't make sense at all. I want to talk about location. Um, there's a lot of feedback that we hear from you that the location rating just really isn't fair. Um, you've declared where your house is. You can't move where your house is. Why are people leaving a review for the location is, re is really what we hear. Um, you know, when we think about the, I, I completely understand that it's <coughs> an unfair um, perception. But I want to maybe uh, share from the guest side for a second. Listing location is maybe one of the most important factors to our guests in determining where to stay. Our hosts have homes in amazing areas that are convenient for them for their particular trip. And that location, whether it's the neighborhood, the specific cross streets, the landmark, or the conference that they're traveling to, that's really important to them. 
And so when a guest rates your location, they're really just answering a question as to whether they thought that location was convenient for them. And it's just an indicator for whether another guest may want to stay in that place, whether it was close to the town, uh, downtown they wanted to be near or wh whether it was more quiet. It's not a one size fits all, right? Uh, it, we know it's not perfect. I do want to reassure you that your location rating does not affect your search ranking, and it doesn't affect your eligibility for any of our programs like Superhost or Plus. We actually only look at your overall rating score for programs like that. So um, your overall experience, in or overall experience doesn't actually take into account any of the subcategories. So cleanliness, value, um, location, communication, these are just signals for us to be able to give guests uh, more indications when they're booking. Um, and in our research, we have actually found that the location rating uh, star has the least impact on how guests rate their overall experience with you. So hopefully you don't feel overly um, constrained by what this rating is and you can understand a little bit of why um, it provides value to our guests. And, um, ho and hopefully this provides a little context on this very complicated system of ours. It is very, it is very <laughs> it complicated. Is. <laughs> it is. It's really complicated. And as hosts, we know we get our business from our reviews. So it is essential that, that we know that you guys are really working on this. Yeah. We're going to work so. on it, and we'll dig into those outliers. And if we do find something that we, we can see is really unfair and is hurting our hosting community, you absolutely can believe we're committed to figuring that out and fixing it. Claire, I also want to tell you that the host community, there was over 10,000 votes on this question. <laughs> so it's definitely on everybody's mind. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to question eight. Um, oh, this is the last question. Last question. Um, this is very exciting because I live in Los Angeles, so there's lots of things to do. And there's lots of hosts who have decided to do experiences. I've actually been encouraged to do one myself, and I'm just not brave enough yet to go to dive in. But the question is, people are asking, when do you plan to expand experiences to their neighborhood? This is my favorite question. <laughs> um, <laughs> You've been waiting yeah, for it. Yeah, no, experiences are booming. It's going really well. We're doing over a million and a half seats a year already and it's growing faster every single week. It's actually growing 10 times faster than our homes business did at the same age. So it's going incredibly well. When we started about a year and a half ago, we were in 12 cities. We're now in 200 cities. By the end of the year, we'll be in 1,000 cities, over 1,000 cities. That's great. And so we are now accepting submissions from hosts pretty much in every major guest destination. So this is my call to all the home hosts out there to go submit your experience at airbnb.com slash create your experience. And uh, we think it's really exciting. Already a third of our hosts are home hosts. And uh, it's a great way to make extra money, you know, living your passion. But also our top 5% of hosts are making over $27,000 a year. In fact, we have some hosts making over $100,000 a year already. From their experiences. Just from their experience, just wow. from their passion. And so we're really excited to get more of our home hosts doing this. You're already hospitality experts. And also a plug to have our home hosts be guests. You don't have to book a home to take an experience. You can do it in your own city. And the advantage of taking it in your own city is you get to know what's really cool, and then you can, uh, you can uh, suggest it to your guests when they come to make their stay better. We're working on programs to build in the product that will make it easier for our home hosts and our experienced hosts to connect. OK, you've almost got me convinced. Yeah. <laughs> I think you make a great host. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I know. Anybody want to do a 1980s movie trivia night? <laughs> OK, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Thanks, John Bott. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, that's fantastic. And um, we're, that's the final, that was the last question, That was question, the last right? question. You're well, on. First of all, you were an amazing host. Thank you oh, so much thank for you. moderating. Thank you. Thank you. I had a great time. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for inviting um, me. So, so thank you, everyone, for, for watching today. Thank you for all of our hosts for coming here in San Francisco and for the thousands of people that w are watching, uh, tens of thousands, presumably, that are watching um, online. So I want to thank you. Um, and we want to end today by sharing a few exciting updates. And so maybe, Clara, you can kind of bring the show home with a few updates. Great. You know, I really want to thank all of our hosts out there for all of your feedback. We got so many questions in this Q&A, and like Brian said, we actually read through all of them and categorized them. But I want to reassure you, it's not only that that we're looking at. 
We care when you call customer support and you have your feedback for us. We, ca we care when you write in the community center and we read your threads. Uh, we care when you share on social. We care when you meet us in person and share this feedback with us. And it really shapes the way that our team actually develops the, pro the roadmap to support you. And so I want to thank you and encourage you to keep giving us this feedback. Um, we care a tremendous amount of your success, about your success here. We actually have an entire team here that's called Host Success, that's dedicated to supporting our hosts around the world. And they, along with so many teams at Airbnb, actually work every single day to help you earn more money, to help you be successful, to help you get the right guests and really show off your homes and now your passions and, and experiences. So I maybe just want to highlight a few things that you should expect to be coming um, in the coming months that we're wor working on, purely based on your feedback. We've heard from you on the reservation page. It's too hard to use. You need to be able to print it. You need to be able to sort it. You need to be able to filter by accepted and declined. Um, the page is too slow to load. So we're working on those things right now, and you should expect updates uh, coming soon. We know that the calendar is really important to you. Um, we're making it easier right now to see which dates you've blocked very clearly. We're making it easier to scroll by month to future months at a time. And we're actually just going to make it bigger because we know the real estate's really important and we're going to make it faster to load too. So also something in progress now that you'll actually um, see coming this summer. And then of course, we're always working on how to help you make your listing stand out. You want to attract more guests, have a beautiful listing that stands out. One piece of work that we're working on is actually on photos. Now, many of you probably know we have a pro photography service where you can actually use pro photog uh, pr professional photographers and have them come take photos of your home. But not everyone actually can use pro photography. And so we're also making it easier when you just upload your own photos. We're giving you instant feedback to say, is the photo too bright? Is the photo too dim? Is the photo you know, too cluttered? So that you can actually know in real time as you're uploading your photos and updating your listing whether this is something that will appeal to guests. And we're just at the very beginning of this, but more to come on that soon. So these are just a few examples of all the work that we're doing um, that you should hopefully uh, feel, see this summer. And it should hopefully make hosting much easier in the coming months. So um, please keep the uh, feedback coming. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll hand it back to Brian. Yeah, so thank you, everyone. And we'll see you in a few months for the next Q&A in September. Thank you, everyone.